I thought y'all were going to play again. I like that so much, I wanted you to do it again. Well, good morning, and welcome to the house of the Lord here at First United Methodist Church. It's good to see you all here this morning. Before I get started with the announcements, I'm going to fill everybody in at one time on what's going on with my son, so that I don't have to do it 50 times. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your thoughts, your prayer, your concern. Um, Brian is home now. Um, Quickly to tell you what happened is they found he had stroke-like symptoms, so they ran the whole stroke gamut of tests and um, found that he had a dissection in his vertebral artery, which basically means that the inside wall pulled away, uh, it didn't bleed into, it. there was like a bubble uh, inside his artery, which creates a restricted blood flow. Um, so they put him in ICU immediately, put him on a heparin drip uh, for, so that to prevent the blood clot, they kept him there for a couple days. He is now home on a blood thinner and um, for three months, and then they're going to go back and check it again. Uh, Their thought is it's going to heal itself. So God is awesome. Um, He, the worst thing about it is he's a police officer and he's going to have to be on light duty for three months. And uh, he's taken that a whole lot better than I thought that he would. (laughs) Um, but we really appreciate uh, your your thoughts and prayers, and uh, prayerfully, God will continue to heal his body, and um, he will be fine. So, thank you all very much. Uh, announcements, announcements. Right after church today, the children are hosting a luncheon for those of you who have lost a, a spouse in your life. I know that it's a hard time. Uh, I can't imagine how you feel, but we want to just um, let you know that close to Valentine's Day, you have lots of people who love you, and the children are going to serve you a lunch today that's being uh, prepared by Scott Bellamy, and I hear it's delicious. So uh, if you have an RSVP to that, I'm sure knowing Scott, he's got plenty of food. It will be in the fellowship hall right after church. So um, if if you'd like to, go join them. Um, To be honest with you, I I have to look over real quickly because I haven't had a chance. Uh, Between taking care of my son and my grandchildren, Steve stepped in with the grandkids, uh, my daughter-in-law stay in the night so I spent the night with my grandkids had to get up at six o'clock in the morning to take them to school um six o'clock in the morning we there oh gosh um there's mission impact information there oh Shrove Tuesday Jane I'm surprised you didn't jump up and down for me over there um if you can believe it or not, next week is Ash Wednesday already. Um, so we will have Ash Wednesday services at 12 in the afternoon and at 7 at night. The day before is what's known as Shrove Tuesday, and we will have a pancake uh, breakfast buffet at 5.30 in the Fellowship Hall. So all are welcome to come and join us for that. We will be having a church-wide work day, March 4th. This is a church-wide... 5.30 p.m., right? 5.30 (laughs) p.m. Yes. Not 6 o'clock, get up for school a.m. Sorry, yes. Um, So, church-wide work day. Um, Any of those of you who are able to give some time to come out here and work around the church, work in the church, whatever you're able to do, um, bring waters for the people who are working, whatever you're able to do, we encourage you to come out Saturday morning, March 4th. After church today, you're going to have another ABC training? We did it before church. Oh, we did it before church at 9 a.m. 
But if you're interested and you haven't attended one of the trainings, make sure that you see uh, Norman uh, or Rachel. Rachel. Rachel's over there. She's waving. There you go. Um, We are in need of sound and audio technicians. So if this sounds fun to you, um, please contact Grant uh, Neesmith. Whether you can help over there or over here, Scott's up there right now. Um, We need technicians to learn how to run the microphones and all the stuff that goes with having a service. So um, if you're able to help, it would be awesome that you can be trained. And then we have a rotation basis. And so if somebody's going to be out, we're not panicking because there's nobody to run the sound or the slides over there or whatever. So make sure that you let somebody know if you're able to do that or if you want to be trained to do that. Are there any other announcements for the good of the church this morning? Oh, Judy. Oh, yes. Um, is, it, is it in here? Wednesday at 2. Um, Sally Conley, if some, most of you probably know Sally, um, passed away the beginning of the last week, I believe it was. Um, There will be a memorial service here at church on Wednesday at 2 o'clock because she was part of our congregation. She she lived at Covenant Towers. She was living in Texas just here recently helping take care of her daughter. Uh, But there's a lot of you who want to be able to uh, join the memorial service on Wednesday. Because of that, and there's so many of you that are part of my Bible study that's at 1.15, I think probably the best thing to do is just cancel the Bible study so that you can come and be part of the memorial service for Sally. Yeah, I see some thank yous, so that's a good thing. Um, Continue to read your scripture, but we'll pick up with Bible study the following week. Okay? Thank you, Judy. Yeah. All right, let's take just a moment to stand and greet each other with the peace of Christ. Good morning. Good morning. I'm not feeling kind of out of it. Good morning. Hey. If you said six o'clock, get up, go to school, I was doing this. I'm oh. so bad. <laughs> That's what they were laughing about. With a nine-year-old and a four-year-old. Yeah, welcome to it, been, been a long time. <laughs> Yeah, my 35-year-old son. Yeah. Oh. Okay, John Howe. Okay. Before we continue with our opening hymn, uh, Yvonne Britton just told me that uh, John Howe was found in his car this morning outside in the parking lot having a seizure. So um, Preston Britton found him and the ambulance rescue squad is here taking care of him. So can we take just a moment and lift him up in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just lift uh, John up to you. Father, we just ask that you surround him with your love, your peace, your healing touch, your presence, so that he um, does not feel alone, that he feels secure and full of your grace. Be with the uh, emergency people as they treat him right now, and be with the doctors and Robin uh, as they proceed on to the hospital to to uh, check him out. We know, Lord, that your grace is abundant. So uh, be with him now. Uh, In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's take our hymn books and turn to hymn number 64. Hymn 64.
would join me in the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. This morning our scripture lesson is from God through Moses in the 15th through 18th verses of the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see the great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God.
Wow. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the author of life, creator of the universe. Yet, you care to know me fully. You know our hurts, our sorrows, and our regrets. You seek us out while we are yet sinners. Forgive our stubbornness and our arrogance, both individually and as a people. Replace it with a burning hunger for your word. Fill this church, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, that we might impact our community and our neighbors. Dear Lord, as the news is filled with balloons being shot down and war raging in Europe, guide our leaders to seek your face, to seek your counsel and your wisdom. For our answer will not come from political sources. Remind us, Lord, that you are in charge and still seated upon the throne in heaven. You have raised nations up and you have let them fall in accordance with your will. Dear Lord, we ask that you will usher in a revival. That you will change the heart of this land. There are powerful things happening, Lord. There is revival taking place at Asbury University and other places where Your spirit is on fire. Even as we meet, they are in the midst of a Holy Spirit work. Dear Lord, we come to you with requests, and you know each of them. Address them according to your perfect will. As we lift them up by name, Most recently, our brother John Howe. We pray, Lord, that you will lift, you know that they're they're every issue, they're every concern, and you will take those upon yourself and you will bear them. Dear Lord, thank you for compelling us to lift these names up. And those that have gone unspoken, those that are unknown, you are aware of them all. Dear Lord, as many of us gather today to celebrate this football sporting event, keep us mindful that you are worthy of such praise and celebration. And realize that the angels in heaven celebrate just as much when one of us, wayward sheep, returns home. There is a celebration in heaven when that one lost soul returns. Help us, Lord, to find peace in that. Know that you are seeking us out even in our stubbornness. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite all those kids here, if they would, join Miss Yvonne at the rail for a children's message. I know what this is? Elbow macaroni. Does it taste good? It does? You want to taste one? <laughs> wow, this is perfect. Dry macaroni is the best. Y'all hear that? Dry macaroni is the best. Gross. <laughs> you want to try one? You want to try one? You want to try one? They're hot. <laughs> what do we make with dry macaroni? It's good, but what do you put in it? How do you cook it? Water. water. You boil it in water. You make some macaroni and cheese with it. That's mainly what we do with this, right? Mac and cheese. Yeah, just cheese, some milk, and it's very good, right? Well, this reminds me of a, a Bible story of Ezekiel. Do y'all know that Bible story? Where um, God took Ezekiel and showed him a valley full of dry bones. What would y'all think of that? Y'all think of the Lion King when you th- see that? Remember when they went, Simba kind of wandered into the valley of all those bones of animals? Well, they were scattered all around, and there was no life in them. God spoke to Ezekiel and asked him, can these bones live again? Ezekiel didn't know what to say and replied, Oh, Lord, you only know the answer to that. Then God spoke to Ezekiel and said, Speak to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, listen to the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Look, I'm going to put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Kind of like this macaroni and cheese, right? No, no, you cannot. So Ezekiel spoke the message just as God told him. As he spoke, the bones started rattling. They started coming together to complete skeletons. And their skins and muscles started to cover the skeletons and breath into their bodies. And they came alive. And they became alive. And if we look at this macaroni again, it's dry, it's hard, it's not very good. Well, to most of us, it's not very good. It looks like nothing can help it. But we all know that if we boil it, we add some milk and cheese, it's very good indeed, right? Yeah. That's the way it is when we face something that's very hard in our lives. Sometimes it's hard to think that anything good can happen. That everything in life is like the valley of the dry bones. But just as we know, like this macaroni can become very good, we know that it's hard things in our life can become a lot better. I'm sure all of y'all had bad days, right? You don't have bad days? Oh, man, I wish I didn't have bad days. Sometimes we do, but we always pray and the Lord lifts us up and makes us have a good day, right? Turns it into a good day. Just as God brought us brought life to the valley of the dry bones with the breath of his Holy Spirit, God can make bad things better in, his own, in our own lives too. And he will when we trust him for it. 
That is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. So let's say a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes we face hard things and life seems hopeless. Help us remember the lesson of the dry bones. If you can make dry bones live again, you can make something good out of the hard things in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the kids make their way to Little Church, I invite the ushers forward for receiving tithes and offerings.
Gracious Heavenly Father, take these, the gifts of our hands and tithes and offerings, to expand your kingdom, to spread your love, and change the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is 2025 in the faith we sing. We'll sing it together twice. Our scripture today comes from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 11, verses 14 to 25. Then the word of the Lord came to me, mortal, your kinfolk, your own kin, your fellow exiles, the whole house of Israel, all of them are those of whom the inhabitants of Jerusalem have said, They have gone far from the Lord. To us this land is given for a possession. Therefore, says the Lord, though I removed them far away among the nations and though I scattered them among the countries, yet I have been a sanctuary to them for a little while in the countries where they have gone. Therefore, say... Thus says the Lord, I will gather you from the peoples and assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. When they come there, they will remove from it all its detestable things and all its abominations. I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove the heart of stone from their flesh and give them a heart of flesh so that they may follow my statutes and keep my ordinances and obey them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. But as for those whose heart goes after their detestable things and their abominations, I will bring their deeds upon their own heads says the Lord God. Then the cherubim lifted up their wings with the wheels behind them, and the glory of the God of Israel was above them. And the glory of the Lord ascended from the middle of the city and stopped on the mountain east of the city. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God into Chaldea to the exiles. Then the vision that I had seen left me, and I told the exiles 
all the things that the Lord had shown me. These are the words of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. One of the things that I like to do to pamper myself is to occasionally get a pedicure. Very relaxing. I can tell you that I need a pedicure because my nails start catching on my socks and my heels and my ball, my foot become a a little harder than usual and a little calloused. So I go, and after a little bit of trimming and soaking and lotion and scrubbing, and of course, don't forget those hot towels, voila, my feet are like brand new again. You men out there ought to try it if you haven't. (laughs) How do we tell, though, if we have a hard heart? A calloused heart. And then even if we can tell we have one, how do we fix a hard heart? Love. And only with God's help. Amen. In the context, I'll give you a little background about Ezekiel, what he's what he's doing there. He, he has a lot of really weird dreams, visions going on, and I probably picked one of the easiest ones to try to explain to you this morning. If, you, uh, if I read some of them out loud to you, you think I was maybe on a little bit of that medicine they had my son on for a while. So let me give you a little bit of background. The people of Israel had become hard-hearted. So God allows the Babylonians to capture them. He allows this to happen. And, but he's thinking all along, okay, I'm going to allow that to happen. So they're going to realize that maybe they need to change their hearts and their ways and, and who and what they worship. But guess what? They're in bondage by Babylon and they continue to get hard-hearted. They continue to start living the way that the Babylonians live. And they fail to know and to love their God. They had failed the commands of God and the keeping of the law of a pure heart and God's will. They had adopted the culture of their Gentiles around them instead of going in and saying, oh, my Lord would not want me to do this. So God scattered them everywhere. And you'd think that was the end of them, right? Well, we have a God that thinks otherwise. Thanks be to God. We have a God that comes in even when we are scattered even when we have chosen to walk away, even when we have a hard heart against our God, we have a God who loves us. And that's basically what the vision that Ezekiel received in this uh, scripture today is all about. God is telling Ezekiel, I will restore Israel. I will continue to love them. I will continue to bring them back together. They will be my people and I will be their God. There's a lot of Christians today who need a heart transplant, if you will. They have no strength in their lives when it comes to serving God. They are spiritually feeble. They never get excited about their relationship with the Lord. And even a good amen could send them over the edge. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) They have no desire to push into the presence of God, to allow the Holy Spirit to indwell them, to follow the will of God. They think that their idea of 
being a hearted Christian is to um, is to go to the Lord during the commercials in the middle of their favorite football game tonight <laughs> and say a short prayer. That's all I need to do. They think that by not chewing the waitress out the mess of your order is forgiveness. It can be, but there's more to it. Many of these people lose their desire to pray, to seek God, and to move in his spirit. Many have lost their holy lives. They are complacent rather than allowing the spirit to fire them up. They would rather compromise than commit. Now, there's lots of reasons. Life is hard. And sometimes life gets to us. So there's lots of reasons that we can have a hard or stony heart. But that's not what God wants in us. God wants to mend our hearts. Give us a new heart of love, of forgiveness, of following God's will. So in, in contrast to a hard heart, you have a heart of flesh that is excited, that is stirred by the anointing of God, that is entering the gates of God's kingdom even here on this earth, knows the rush of the Spirit, And as it flows through us and guides us and leads us and comforts us and guides us. We're never uh, satisfied with yesterday's anointing because we want to keep a vision for tomorrow and how we can serve God tomorrow and the next day and the next day. We have a desire to stay close to God and keep a holy passion within our hearts. And we allow the power of Christ to overcome Satan and temptation. That is a clean heart. So how do we get... Besides what God does for us, how do we get from that hard, stony heart into a heart of passion? Well, Ezekiel goes on in chapter 18 and he says, Repent and turn away from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me and get yourself a new heart and a new spirit. That's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Well, when I read that, I kind of thought of David a little bit. David. You know... He had a time in his life, he wasn't exactly the best person in the world. You know, he sees Bathsheba. She's lounging in that bathtub. She's soaking up that sun, and he goes, Woo! I like what I see. He finds out that she's married, and her husband is off to war. So what does he do? He makes sure he gets killed. Oh, my, my, my. Well, in Psalm 51, 1 through 17, David realizes that he has walked so far away from God that there is almost no coming back unless he does two things. Repent of his sin and accept God's mercy. It starts off, I'm not going to read the whole, the whole thing to you. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. 
Cleanse me from my sin. He realizes he was wrong. He realizes that he has to go to God with repentance to tell God his sin and say, Lord, help me. I don't ever want to do that again. He says, against you and you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. But then down in verse 10, he says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing presence. Willing spirit, excuse me. David lays it out. He's not rationalizing his sin, but she was a hot babe, God. You know, that temptation was hard. He's saying, I'm guilty. I have sinned. He takes ownership of it. David teaches us the ugly reality of sin. Sin is the opposite of clean. When our hearts are filled with sin, they are hard and they are unpure. Sin is feeling a bit crushed. Have you ever felt like when you sinned, you just knew you shouldn't have done that? And you feel so, so bad. Well, David knew what he had to do. He knew that sin is a separation from God's will and presence in his life. He knew that sin is a separation from the Holy Spirit. So he pleads with God, please do not separate me from that. I repent of my sin. But then he goes on to know that as he repents of his sin, he has a God who loves him. And then he talks about joy and gladness. Because he also knows with that joy and gladness and his repentance that he is once again granted the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. Let me hear joy and gladness, he says. Restore in me a clean heart. You know, we all mess up. We all do. We all might do a little bit of gossiping. We all might bless someone else out in our, inside our head. Might not come out this way, but it's still in there and God knows about it. But as we lift those times up to God, God forgives us. God allows us to feel that joy and gladness once again. Oh, knowing that our hearts have been restored. And that the joy of our salvation through the gift of what Jesus Christ did for us is once again part of us. Didn't Jesus say, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God? Just like the people of Ezekiel's day We need to be reminded of a God who loves us, who will gather us back and fill us with joy and gladness as we just take time to say, God, I messed up. I love you. Please bring me back.
into the joy and gladness of the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn, we're going to announce it, I'll announce it. We can. Let's stand together. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 73. Hymn number 73. We'll sing all Sorry, five I verses. I do a prayer to let you come back over here. But...